speech to the Oku people from His uh, Royal Majesty from the Lord of God. The form of Oku during His Majesty's major peace visit to the Oku people in Yawindi. Your Excellencies and other state dignitaries, Your Royal Majesties, the National President of Ogda, the President of Ogda Yaoundé, all notables, dear invited guests and friends of Oku, dear Oku people, accept warm greetings from the palace and from the people of Oku. Today is a great opportunity for me to address all of you since my ascension to the throne of our four fathers. I am very pleased you are standing behind our vision of coming together as one people, one culture. I heartily appreciate the presence of our neighbors, friends, and other very important dignitaries and well wishers. We shall forever keep them in the deeper hearts of the Oku people. I also seize this opportunity to welcome all of you who have allowed your busy schedules to participate in this very important peace and social cultural event. In the words of the much venerated champion of global peace, Nelson Mandela. It is easy to break down and destroy. The heroes are those who make peace and build. In the past years, as Oku people, we have worked hard on building peaceful coexistence with neighboring tribes. This is something we are taking very seriously and to safeguard it jealously. I also took over within the context of the present conflict, which has fractured the internal stability of our community. My goal has been to focus on using by rule as a traditional authority to promote social dialogue for peace. And I am happy Oko people, as good as they are, always love to work closely with their form. It has been all about trying to make Oku more peaceful and stable so that our people can be able to remain home or come back home and enjoy our culture and values. This is something that is so dear to us and one of the main reasons I choose to stay back in Oku it is a tough choice, but I have no options. Our people need to live their normal lives. Tensions have significantly reduced, but we still have slight issues of access, since Oku on its own cannot assure its own access, if neighbors are inaccessible. We, as Oku people, have been working together with other neighboring tribes to keep on opening access through joint community rehabilitation of village access routes to other neighboring tribes to ensure that goods and people can move freely in and out of the community. Now, I come with a message of peace and hope. My dear Oku people, I assure you that there is hope. All is not lost. We should unite under the Oku Cultural and Development Association order to foster the development of Oku. We should love each other and practice 
peaceful coexistence in our host communities. We should respect the rule of law. We should respect the administration, public authorities, and regulations of the state. Putting the interest of Oku first, let us always put away our differences and take Oku first. I believe this is the only way we are going to begin the shaping of a new destiny for ourselves and our dear community, which has been going through difficult moments for the last over five years. The form is for everyone. The palace is open to receive everybody, no matter their political and social affiliations. The form, therefore, also serves in mediating in dispute and promoting social dialogue amongst our people so that we can live in social harmony before becoming anyone out there with our first Oko people. Ogden as our melting pot for self-reliant development is apolitical. Treat it as such as we shall all celebrate our success. Ogden exists in the interest of Oku and should always be taken as such. Every Oku person should belong to and contribute to Ogden. We are proud and intelligent people. Let us express this through our total support to the Oku Cultural and Development Association of I equally call on every son and daughter of Oku in Yawindi, especially the youth, to give the form and the quiff form of them and all Oku social and cultural development platforms the necessary collaboration needed to achieve their objectives because the focus is to work for your interests and that of Oku. The way forward for Ogda. The constitution of Ogda no longer suits the present prevailing circumstances. Thus, needs an amendment. For example, the General Assembly is supposed to hold only in Oku. It should be allowed to hold anywhere. And if we do not wish to take it far, our regional headquarters can be good. The Constitution should be amended to include the women and youth wings. I understand there are existing structures bringing our youth and women together, some being personal initiatives from the public, but we will, we will leverage on these to create a more productive amalgamation as the arms of Ogda. This will merge our resources for a common good. An annual individual contribution by every Oku person should be introduced. You should be recognized an, an, as an Oku person, both at home and abroad, through payment of an annual registration. A census of Oku people has to be done. We do not know how many of us are located wherever. Relationship between Ogda and the branches. Ogda is a recognized legal entity with only one acknowledgement receipt from the administration. Ogda branches are governed by the Ogda constitution. No branch should have another constitution. Periodic reports should be sent to the national executive committee. The relationships among elites and traditional authorities. I understand the complex nature of this term. 
there are many things we should consider in order to promote our harmony as a community. Our elites have an indisputable role to play. They foster our interests in avenues where we can't intervene. We should always give them the respect as they are authorities. At the same time, we should understand our roots and note that should we disconnect the very roots we come from, we are exposing ourselves to several weaknesses. There is no house without a foundation, just like a house without a roof will surely wear out to bad weather. In order to collaboratively promote our collective interest, we must each we must be each other's keeper and serve as models for the rest of the community. Promotion of Oku culture. Let us make our culture strong by respecting it. Our culture is our fundamental inheritance. We must protect and handle it jealously and carefully. I plead on you not to forget your culture. This is the lone identity we have. So encourage your children to learn the Oku language and practice the Oku culture through any means possible. They are the guarantors of our future. We should transmit our cultural values to them. We must always remain united, peaceful, and positive. I see a prosperous future for us. I therefore call on each and every one of you to keep on supporting our local development and 